glory. Glory to God. Let's lift up holy hands, please, people of God. Let's adore and worship and honor our great king. Listen, God is not a president, he's a king. He demands our allegiance, but he is a mighty God. Mighty, mighty God. Bigger than our circumstances. Bigger than poverty, bigger than lack, bigger than threats of terror, bigger than failing economies, bigger than sickness, bigger than disease, bigger than any threat against our life, bigger than any complexity we may be facing right now. You are the infinitely large one. We magnify you today. The wisest of all, wiser than the wisest, smarter than the smartest, richer than the richest. God in heaven. We have the privilege this morning of calling you Father, Daddy. The Spirit of Christ in us gives us the privilege to call you Father. If God be for us, who or what can successfully be against us? And if God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us, how shall he not also freely give us all things? Thank you, Father. This morning we praise you. This first Sunday service of this great month of November, our hearts are grateful to you for your mercies that have guided us from the start of this year to this present day. And yet we understand that your words said the path of a just man is as a shining light. It shines more and more to the perfect day. And better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof. Our hearts are confident that you have always saved the best for the last. And you'll bring us into all that you've ordained for us. We thank you, Father. This morning, again, in this great second service, we receive eyes that see and ears that hear. We receive a wise and understanding heart. We receive impartations of your grace. And I sense in my heart that barriers shall be broken this morning. Limitations removed. Ceiling shattered. People ushered into dimensions and zones of testimony. Such as they have never touched before. We trust you, our faithful Father. Oh, the sounds of victory multiply in Zion. The sounds of testimony multiply in Zion. And 2022 shall be departed out of with shouts of joy and shouts of testimony. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' precious name. Will somebody give the Lord a big shout of praise this morning? Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Somebody tell your neighbor this morning, I see testimony all over your face and all over your life. And I will continue to rejoice with you in Jesus' precious name. One more time, put those hands together and give the Lord a shout of praise as you are comfortably seated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, welcome to this first communion service, first Sunday service of this great month of November. Hallelujah. The Lord has been kind to us and he'll be kinder still in Jesus' precious name. We welcome our online family and everybody here in this great auditorium. We know that this, uh, today will be a great day of impartation, a great day of testimony in Jesus' name. Please turn your Bibles with me or any how you have your scriptures this morning to Habakkuk. Habakkuk, Habakkuk. If you don't know where it is, just consult your table of contents. If you have a physical Bible, if you have a digital Bible, it's easier. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Habakkuk chapter 2, reading from verse 14. The thought I will begin to share this morning is also the word of the Lord for this month. Hallelujah. Reverence and the glory. Hallelujah. Reverence and the glory. There is a glory of God to be manifested in our lives. Hallelujah. Like I said in the first service, it bears repetition that God has a, a prophetic agenda for this earth and is found in the word of God. No matter the specifics concerning God's call and assignment and plan for us as individuals, all of it must fit in God's general agenda. And it's important for us to understand that this is God's agenda for the earth. Hallelujah. It's not just something that some preacher who just wants to make people feel good are saying, but it's God's agenda. He says, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Hallelujah. Now this almost sounds... I don't, I don't know, like a paradox or something. But um, when you talk about waters covering the sea, I thought that you would say, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as waters cover the earth. Isn't that right? 
But he said, as waters cover the sea. How can waters cover the sea? <laughs> the sea is water. And water is the sea. But prophetically, sometimes the Bible refers to the sea as human beings. So the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Are you here somebody? As waters cover the sea, meaning that as abundant as water is in the sea, that's how abundant the glory of God will be in the earth. My brother, my sister, this earth does not belong to the devil. The rapture, the devil did not create the earth. Through the fall of Adam, he illegally became the God of this world, but he does not own the earth. God has a plan for the redemption of mankind and God has a plan for the redemption of this earth. Praise the name of the Lord. And you and I are part and parcel of that plan as God's people. So, God's plan is that the earth be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Let's again turn our Bibles to um, Numbers chapter 14. I'm going to, well, eventually going to see what the glory of the Lord is. The glory of the Lord is not just a big bright cloud somewhere. We're going to see that the glory of God is a very practical thing that seeks demonstration in practical life. God wants a testimony to his reality in day-to-day -day life. God wants that his movements are observed in the life of his people in day-to-day -day life. You see, God is not physically present on the earth, but he's here physically through his people. And as you go about and interface with people in day-to-day -day life, God wants, desires that there be certain manifestations happening in, through, upon, and around you that will testify to his reality to the world that does not know him. The truth of the matter is that God's people are the greatest advertisement of God upon the face of the earth. My prayer every, not, well I won't say every day, lest I become a liar, but my consistent heart cry is that when people meet me, I know I'm, no, no human being can be perfect on, the, in, in, on this side of heaven, but my constant desire is that when people meet me, praise the name of the Lord, may they in some way meet Jesus. Do you understand that nobody that met Jesus when he was on this earth ever remained the same? Sinners met him and were converted to saints. The sick met him and were healed. The dead met him and were raised from the dead. Are you here somebody? Lack met him and was turned to abundance. I pray that our journey in life will not just be a journey of acquisition of things, but that Jesus will be manifest through our lives. But the truth of the matter is not just, it can, if you're not careful, these, these things can become religious jargons. What do you mean Jesus made manifest? It can become so religious that you can't connect with it. Are you here somebody? If you want to understand Jesus being manifest, go and read the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And see the Son of God operating and living on, on the face of the earth. The truth of the matter is that God's plan is not that Jesus be in a class of his own. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, If any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creature. All things are what? Passed away. And all things are what? New. And all things, verse 18 says, are of God. He has reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus and he has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation that is to say God was personally present in Jesus Christ reconciling the world to himself not imparting their sins to them are you somebody but rather dispensing forgiveness and the power to turn when that woman met Jesus the woman of the night met Jesus and everybody was picking up stones, the religious folks, to stone and kill her. Jesus bent down. And they were looking at him, seeking occasion, as they always, as their custom was, to find a word that he would say in error. And Jesus looked at them, and he, the Bible said he began to pencil something, do as if he was writing on the ground, and lifted his, up his eyes and said, let him, be who's not, who, let him who is without sin be the first to cast the stone. One by one, they dropped those stones. And Jesus turned to her and said, woman, where are thine accusers? He said, Lord, they're not here. He said, neither do I accuse you. But notice what he said. Now go and sin no more. So the concept of forgiveness of sin is the power not to continue in sin, but to be delivered from the power of sin. When you encounter Jesus and eternal life gets into you, you no longer become a sinner. The power of God is in you. There is a power in you. Are you here somebody? To be detached from sin. You just need to feed that new nature in you. New Testament Christianity does not command necessarily people to turn away from sin. But it feeds the nature of God in them. And the nature of God in you repels and abhors sin anyway. 
Are you here, somebody? Well, what is my point? God wants people that meet you on a day to day, people to meet uh, the day level to meet Jesus. You see, if you're not careful, you think that the movies they make about Jesus is reality. Thank God they did their best. But that's not necessarily actually. Jesus is no one kind of spooky guy. That when he's playing, there's one kind of music playing behind. Say yes, we are so Galilee. Jesus came to Galilee to play. Or he went somewhere, he met the madman of Gadara. Then they'll be playing Hollywood music behind. Those things don't play in real life. Real life, you just have blood, sweat, and tears. That's what you have in real life. But Jesus wants to manifest himself in reality of life. Jesus wants that inside of the grind of life, when people meet one who is in Christ, oh, hallelujah, there's an aura around about you. Are you here, somebody? There's an aura. You don't always have to be wearing cologne. Sometimes you, 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 your sweat will remove the cologne. But there's an aura around about you. There's something around about you. Just something that's attractive. Are you here, somebody? There's something around about you. So when the Bible said that the knowledge of the glory of God shall cover the earth as waters cover the sea, God in these last days, before this event we call the rapture, is going to demonstrate to this earth that God is the reality. God wants to bring this knowledge to a place beyond debate. Oh, hallelujah. You know, the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 verse 3, talking about Jesus, that Jesus showed himself alive to disciples with infallible proofs. That means beyond debate. So God wants to manifest himself in a, in a way in your life that's beyond debate. Oh dear Lord, I'll just keep going this way. Do you know that if you're here and you know Jesus, you have a testimony? Some people make the mistake of thinking that a testimony, testimony must be about things. It must not necessarily be about things. It's good if you say God gave you a brand new car. Are you somebody? But you know, some people's testimony is that they survived yesterday. Some people's testimony is that there's no reason. They, they, some, some of you, you're in church this morning by the grace of God. You're looking nice and cleaned up. But in the natural, it just seems that you have every cause to go to sleep. But something, or to sleep in on Sunday. But something drug you out. I'm just speaking like an American now. This drew you out. American say they drug you out. Something drew you out. Huh? Some people's testimony is that they, they feel like, like, like they go through circumstances. They feel like this is the end. But something, like our dear friend Reverend TV, Double Peter said, something, that spirit of God in you just begins to reawaken in you. The joy of God, the peace of God. And tells you, give it one more push. Step out again today. Go again today. And you wonder how you slept fighting depression, but you woke up in joy. Man, lift up your hands and thank the Lord this morning. You are a testimony. You know why you need to treat that person next to you nice? Whether they're your husband or your wife. is because that person next to you is a testimony. I'm sure if all of us today put on this screen the thoughts we thought when we woke up, between when we woke up and we came to church, many people will run away from this church. But you're a testimony. So you are the glory of God. And let me tell you something. Before Jesus comes to take away the church, and he's coming. He's sure coming, and he's closer than he has ever been before. But there's something that's about to happen. This is prophetic. Habakkuk 2.14 is prophetic. Um, Numbers 14. Oh, hallelujah. Are we together, folks? Numbers 14 is prophetic. This is God's agenda for this earth. God is going to demonstrate to people before the church is cut away in rapture that the devil doesn't own this earth. Are you here somebody? And number two, that he is a good God. He's going to change the narrative in his mind about what people think that God is. And one of the reasons why revelation comes to us in these last days is because God has no other representatives but us. People have the impression of God is, is the impression that we give them. And I'm, and I'm asking God consistently, all of us as a church, including myself as a body of Christ, that we, we grow in that revelation so that we understand that some of the most critical moments of our lives is when we are interfacing with humanity. Because people are looking at us to judge who our God is. Are you here, somebody? It may or may not be the case because there's some people, it is not the abundance of finances that they need right now. They've got that. Hello. 
Some people have what you call a good life. They have that. But I tell you the truth. There is an aching void in every human soul. No matter how cosmetic they are. God made man for himself. And there's an aching void in any man's soul. Some people want to fill it with drugs. Some people want to fill it with sex. Some people want to fill it with addictions. Some people want to fill it with success. No success is enough for them. No amount of conquest is enough for them. Some people is conquering men. Some people is conquering women. Some people is, is getting more money or building another business or doing this or that or getting another degree. But the only thing that fills the human soul is Jesus, 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 Jesus. The only thing that can give you contentment is Jesus. When you find your contentment in Jesus, then everything else he does in your life becomes an evangelistic tool to win somebody else into that contentment that you can't buy with money. Why am I going this way this morning? The goodness of God wants to be manifested all over the earth. Are you here somebody? God is raising you up. Every part of your life is a testimony to connect with somebody in your world. You don't need to connect with somebody in Pastor Duncan's world. You need to connect with somebody in your world. Pastor Duca's testimony may not be relevant in your world, but you're so special in your world. Are you a somebody? So the glory of God filling this earth as the waters come the sea, guess what? Is God's goodness breaking forth in the life of his people. Now let's look at John 17. Have, have we read Numbers 14? Let's look at that quickly. Hallelujah. Oh dear Lord. Somebody with me this morning. All right. Numbers 14. Um, verse 21. Thank you, Lord. But as truly as I live, all the earth. Does God exaggerate? Does God exaggerate? Remember, earth was made for man. Man was not made for the earth. You see, the house you are living in was built to be inhabited by human beings. So which is greater, the house or the human? It's the human. The house was made for the human. Earth was made for mankind. It was, it was built by God to sustain life. So man is the superior, earth is the inferior. So when he says, as true as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. He's saying this, that is the man on the earth. The earth being filled with the glory of the Lord is the man on the earth that will manifest something. Are you here somebody? The glory of the Lord will be expressed through men. Now let's look at John 17 verse 22. John 17 verse 22. Jesus in his great intercession praying for the church, praying for the body of Christ, praying for believers. John 17, 22, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. Look at verse 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. Are you here somebody? Now this with me where I am is not necessarily heaven. Are you here somebody? Is in the state and place of relationship that I have with you. I want them to be in that place where I am. That they may behold my glory. Which thou hast given me. For thou hast loved me from the foundation of the world. So God has a glory plan for this earth. And if he has a glory plan for this earth. It's because he has a, a glory plan for the man on the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you here somebody? You look at this famous scripture in... Romans 3.23 that said, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So you see that when God created man in the first place, the Bible said he crowned him with glory and honor. You find that in Psalm chapter 8. That was not just a big light. It meant something. Hallelujah. Now in the Old Testament, when you see the word glory, in most places is the word kavod. It's actually kabod, K-A-B-O-D. Kabod, kabod. What does that mean? It means a heavy weight. It means something that is heavy. Are you here somebody? Something that is placed, it's not a negative weight, but a positive weight. Is something, is to be weighted with something. Glory to God. Are you here somebody? When they say somebody is a heavyweight champion, and he has belts to prove, he has laurels to prove. Are you here somebody? And he has rewards to prove. The glory of God is heavyweight. Actually, the, one of the, the first places that glory comes up is when you find out that Laban's, was it Laban's sons were complaining and saying that Jacob had stolen all their father's glory. And that word kavod there, what they were talking about was his wealth. So if you look at that word kavod, it has, it has, it has many um, descriptions. It's called a weight. It's called something that yields in large quantity. Something that is plenteous in number or something that is present in large quantity. Something that takes place on a large scale. 
It also talks about abundance, honor, dignity, reputation. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So that's the glory. That's the glory. The glory is not just one cloud or one light. The glory is a practical manifestation of God upon the earth through his people. And when that glory begins to show up, it will affect every area of human life. It will help people live life the way God designed it to be lived. You know, when Jesus was praying, he said, Thy kingdom come, thy, pray this way, thy, um, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy, thy what? Thy will be done, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. How many of you know that there's no poverty in heaven? How many of you know there's no sickness there? How many of you know there's no oppression there? Listen, God, before the rapture, wants to demonstrate a mini, a taste. Psalm 34 says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, this is God's plan. Are you here, somebody? Now, whether people get in line with it or not, it's going to happen because God says it's going to happen. So, my point is, if it's going to happen anyway, why not through me? Oh, hallelujah. Let me be a participator, oh God. I want to be a participator in this, your great plan. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Now let's look at Exodus chapter 33 verse 18. What is the glory of God? We've talked about it a little bit here. Is, there's a word I want to bring out before I go back to Kabod. Let's go to verse no, 33, 33 verse 18. Hallelujah. So when he said the earth shall be filled Mike, with the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. What's he talking about? Psalm 33 verse 18. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Verse 18, please. Oh, glory to God. Behold, the eye of the Lord. Is that it? Did I say Psalm? Exodus. 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 I beg your pardon. Exodus. Exodus 33. Oh, hallelujah. All righty. And he said, I beseech thee, this is Moses. When he was on the mountain talking to the Lord. And he said, I beseech thee, show me your glory. Verse 19. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. So simply put, the glory of God is the goodness of God. Can I say that again? Or may I say that again? The glory of God is the goodness of God. So when he said, it's my will that the earth be filled with my glory as the waters cover the sea. Listen, God wants to manifest his goodness like never before to the human race. Hallelujah. I say, I said, darkness fills the earth in the last days. Extreme darkness coming upon the people. But guess what? In the camp of the righteous, there's going to be a manifestation of God's glory. I said, God's glory. Light is never more important but than in the backdrop of darkness. Are you here somebody? So guess what? God is about to do something. As God's plan to do something with his people in Nigeria. Let's localize it now. In Nigeria. Hallelujah. I say in Nigeria. Hallelujah. I say in Nigeria. Hallelujah. God is going to raise up his people above the storm in this country in the name of Jesus. The storm does not have to calm down for you to prosper. Oh my God. Diseases does not, don't have to stop flowing for you to walk in health. There's a manifestation of the glory of God, the goodness of God. Are you here, somebody? Thank you, Lord Jesus. And the goodness of God is relevant for every aspect of life, every aspect of human life. You know, answered prayer is a manifestation of the goodness of God. Healing in your body, health in your body is a manifestation of the goodness of God. Are you here, somebody? When the goodness of God moves into economic systems, it raises men and women up in spite of the system. It's a manifestation of the goodness of God. So God is looking for a channel to deploy heaven's economy through. Will he find you? I said, will he find you? Kai, in these last days, your house will be a house of refuge. <laughs> Some people will come to your house for holidays and they will leave and diabetes will leave them. Some people come to your house for holidays. And sleep in your environment. Are you here somebody? And high blood pressure will leave them. Some people will come to your house and catch the spirit of prosperity. Ah, I've always often said this. That you can't be around anywhere that's where fish is being fried. Even if it's a breezy place. That's something about that fish. When they're frying it and you're close enough. You get fishy. Not fishy like suspicious but the smell. That thing can over, overpower the strongest cologne man. That fish. 
So there's something, there's something about the spirit of prosperity, the spirit of health. There, there's, there's an atmosphere of glory that things happen in. Are you here, somebody? Sometimes people can come into a church service and they, may not, they, they, they get blessed by the preacher's preaching. But sometimes they just come into a church service and discover that something lifts off of them. Because there is the glory of God there. The goodness of God in manifestation. And that's what God wants every child of God to carry in these last days. Wherever you are, he wants this goodness to show forth in your life. Are you here somebody? Something that destroys oppression. <laughs> somebody will look at your life and say, you're going through some stuff. You don't have a right to be this happy. So the world may not give me that right. But this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away. This peace that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. But let me tell you the truth. Not only do we have peace that pass all understanding and joy unspeakable full of glory, we have manifestations to match. I said we have manifestations to match. So it's not just about, about, about glorifying joy and peace, which is amazing and wonderful and things not being fixed in your life. No, you have the peace and the joy plus the miracles. So what is the glory? Is the goodness of God in manifestation in your life. What else is the glory? John chapter 2. John chapter 2. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Verse 11. Jesus, his first public miracle in Cana of Galilee at that marriage feast. The Bible said this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. And his disciples believed on him. So what was the glory he manifested? Was he flying in the air? Or maybe he just, his face just became luminous, very bright, so nobody could see his face. What was the glory? He changed and provided a miracle of provision at that feast. Are you here somebody? So miracles, glory to God forevermore, of diverse kinds are manifestations of the glory of God. Do you know there are miracles of preservation? There are miracles of protection? There are miracles of provision? There are all kinds of miracles. Miracles are not baby class in the kingdom of God. There are evidences that God is real. Satan does fake miracles. But God always outclasses the fake. There are real miracles. You don't need to settle for fake miracles. There are real miracles. Real miracles are sustainable. Satan's miracles always have question mark. It's what house of people call boju boju. It's just the more you look, the less you see. But God's miracles are real. They are sustainable. He said his disciples believed on him. Now look at Numbers chapter 14 verse 21. So the glory of God, the goodness of God is manifested in miracles. Oh, Hallelujah. My brother, my sister, let no one cheat you of your inheritance. Live every day in anticipation of miracles. Oh, hallelujah. Preservation, protection, deliverance. Oh, glory to the name of the Lord. My brother, my sister, we have equal inheritance. We have equal. I discovered this. Nobody is better than anybody in the kingdom of God. But some people seem to be enjoying better because they simply believe what God said. Oh, hallelujah. Sir, ma, I believe that I can never be stranded in this life. I found it in God's word. Are you here, somebody? I believe that I'm God's favorite child. Oh, glory to God. How about you? How about you? How about you? How about you? I believe the goodness and favor and mercy follow me every day of my life. How about you? Glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that God can wake up somebody in China and show him my face. See, I, I, I'm simple enough, except you be like a little child and believe God. I believe that God is causing men's hearts to respond favorably towards me. I believe that wherever I go, God turns people's hearts in favorable disposition towards me. Everywhere I go, I just whisper, I say, God, thank you. I receive your favor here today. God, thank you. I receive your favor here today. Are you here, somebody? These are manifestations of the glory of God. Are you here, somebody? As truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Verse 22. 
Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, who have seen my glory and my miracles, who have seen my glory and my miracles. What was God talking about? He was talking to Moses about the, the way he moved Israel out of Egypt and through the Red Sea and fed them with manna in the, in the wilderness and all of those things. He said, these people have been seeing my miracles. They have been seeing things that only the hand of divinity can do. Oh, hallelujah. Have you ever seen something that only God can do? There's more where that came from. Oh, glory to God forevermore. I said there's more where that came from. Have you ever seen something in your life that only God can do? Many of you sitting here today, you are alive because God has delivered you severally. Some you are conscious of, some you are not conscious of. I can tell you of accidents that should have ended my life. Are you here somebody? I can tell you about diseases that should have ended my life. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. My big, 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 big uncle here. Uncle Louis Dam is a manifestation of the glory of the Lord. Auntie, how many days was Uncle in that coma? All kind of thing. They had to drill into his brain, do all kind of thing. Thank God for, thank God for, for, for medical science, but thank God for miracles. I tell the truth. It was God's power that pulled him out of that. Are you here, somebody? Don't let anybody. Don't let any human being alive or dead or nurtured coming to this earth <laughs> shut down your faith in miracles. Remember Sarah, your mother. Remember Abraham, your father. I called him alone and I blessed him and I increased him and the wilderness before him was turned to a garden of Eden. Remember Sarah, your father. He said, hearken unto him. That is our covenant root. When the devil is telling you that things are impossible and helpless and hopeless in your life, remember your covenant root. Remember that God moved Sarah to the place where biologically it was impossible for her. Even if you froze her eggs at 100, at 90, egg no go reproduce. God moved it and allowed it to come to the place where, eh, just to demonstrate, this is the way I want my church to think. The seed of Abraham. Galatians 3, 29 says, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and as according to the promise, let no devil tell you that your case is hopeless. Let no devil tell you that you have gone too far for a miracle. He moved Abraham to a point that everything in his body, naturally speaking, was dead. And the Bible said, this is your covenant lineage. This is your lineage. Oh, hallelujah. Where you enter this family. The Am family. Am. Ham. I am. Am. That I am. So technically now, my name is Dunka Ham. Ham. Tell your neighbor, are you from the Ham family? Galatians 6, 29, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And as according to the promise, I said, I said, are you from the Ham family? Then nothing dies in your hands. Are you from the Ham family? Then money follows you like a magnet. Are, are you from the Ham, Ham family? No devil can kill you before your time. You are shielded and hidden in the blood of Christ. Are you from the Ham family? Then the word hopeless and impossible does not exist in your vocabulary. So delete, 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 delete it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you from the Am family? Then live in constant expectation of miracles. Every end is a new bend. When they say it's over, it's just about to begin. Jesus said, I am the Alpha Omega. That well, is not Alpha and Omega. It's Alpha Omega. Alpha Omega means there's a continuum. No end, no beginning. When, when it looks like it's a beginning, a new end. Uh, uh, End, a new beginning. Uh, uh, it has, when it looks like a beginning, end. When it looks like an, uh, an end, is a beginning. Are you here, somebody? I said, are you here, somebody? It's a continuum of progress. The path of a just man is a shining light and shines more and more to the perfect day. Glory to the name of the Lord. Uh, you know, the Lord told me in, in the break, in the intermission, he said there are special miracles, this service. Special miracles. Special miracles. Special miracles. Material miracles. Yes. The Lord said, I'm going to give some people, or my people, in this second service, new territories. Yes. You see, this is our glory. Genuine miracles that come from the hand of God. You live in that consciousness. You live with an exemption mentality. You live with a supply mentality. It's not about what you have in the bank or not. I'm not saying you should live carelessly and that you should not 
um, adhere because, for example, faith and business practice, they're not in competition. They don't fight. Even science correlates God's power. Science, there's no conflict. But let faith always come first. Otherwise, you come to a place, you'll be stranded. This is what we try and tell people of God. Especially people who have been blessed with great intelligence, we try to advise them. We try to advise them that God bless you with this intelligence, but the most intelligent people are the people who put faith first. I'm not saying you should discard your intelligence or discard the rules of your profession. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying put faith first too. Because there is an ancient spirit behind in this system, in this world system called the devil, Diabolos. He's there. He's been defeated. But you need to know how to stand against him. Are you here somebody? Now we talked about this goodness and these miracles that are inheritance. What is the passage into it? This is what the Lord is emphasizing to us as we enter November. Because October, November, December, by the word of the Lord, is the same month. And he said it's time to run. That means there's going to be an acceleration. Yes, I hear that, Lord. I say that. I thank you for reminding me. There's going to be acceleration. He said, I'm going to multiply my miracles. I'm going to multiply testimony this third quarter. So, as we have entered this second month, the pace is increasing more. In, in expect the rate of miracles and testimonies in your life to increase. But God's giving us some keys. Now look at this, Psalm 31 verse 19. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Are you with me? Oh, hallelujah. See, I'm multiplying miracles in my people. See, I, I can just sense God's heart is happy. Do you know that God wants to make a demonstration of your life? Do you know that? Just... Just allow the river to flow, please. Allow the river to flow. God wants to multiply your miracles. Despite your past errors. Now look at this. Oh, how great is your goodness. Which you have piled up. Laid up. For them that fear you. Oh my God. Which you have demonstrated for them that trust in you Ayaba. before the sons of men. Oh, there's something about a life that is constantly unashamed, unashamedly identifying with Jesus even when it looks like things are not adding up in your life. Unashamedly declaring that God is a healer even when your body is still ravaged with sickness. Unashamedly declaring that God prospers even when it looks like you're on, the, you're on the bottom of the food chain. He said, they that, come, that, that openly show their trust in me. Oh, hallelujah. Before the sons of men, he said, I've laid up my goodness for them. Oh, I love my like I said, in those days, when God will start counting his jewels. You know God's jewels? People who keep saying, God has been good to me. God has shown me who he is. God has manifested himself in my life severally. Just because things don't seem to be adding up right now, I'm not going to change my testimony of God. I boldly proclaim that he's a healer. He's a good God. I may not understand everything, but I believe. You see, belief is the key to lack of understanding. And the Bible said this, that to those people who not out of eye service, but in the secret of their place, in the place where they're talking with their confidants, when nobody, they're sure that nobody will hear what they said, their testimony of God is sure. Angels are documenting their statements. And the day of recompense has come. Angels are documenting statements of consecration. What are you saying when you don't understand what's going on in your life? What are you saying when your life seems to be a contradiction to the promise and the prophecy? What are you saying when things don't seem to be adding up? What... Are you saying when you're giving and it seems like you're going back? What are you saying? Angels are documenting. And God said, I'm counting up my jewels. Counting up my jewels. I've laid up goodness for them. My God. <laughs> Do you know what an inheritance is? Work is necessary in life. But the greater blessings of God come by inheritance. He trains you by, by you being by you working and being diligent and not lazy. But that training is to open you up to entrust you with his favor because favor is entrusted, is a gift. Are you here, somebody? He has laid up things for you <laughs> that hundred years of diligence cannot bring you. Man, Katayaba. 
I heard in the first service, I hear it again. Some people before the year ends are coming into exclusive property. Amen. You look at it and think it's not real. Some of you are coming into some kind of assets that will stagger you. And I hear my spirit, it will be the negotiation. Be bold, the negotiation will be at your pace and at your price. I did tell you all. Maybe I don't say I don't tell you all. My God. You see, when the glory of God manifests, God starts compensating his jewels. The people that men are looking at them and they say, you're stupid for being a church boy, a church girl. <laughs> uh, these are the days we are living in. I understand, Lord. Say, it's time to run. Say with me, it's time to run. I've been saying this thing. Oh. Some of you, one step you take will be like 10 steps. Some of you, one step you take will be like 100 steps. Some of you, one step you take will be like 1,000 steps. I see it, Lord. I see it, Lord. I see it, Lord. Many, many, many franchises, many, many businesses, they have come to the end of themselves. Ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm the one behind the policy change. I'm the one. Can I tell you this? I'm the one behind... I'm the one that moved your, is moving your government to change your currency. God said, I am the one. Forget about your economics. Forget about what it looks like. I'm the one. Do you know what the Holy Ghost... Do you remember, do you remember crossover service? What the Holy Ghost told us in crossover service? That this is the year of the what? Underdog. Where even in church, people who have been despised, who have been faithful to God, they're going to come into what we call inheritance. What is inheritance? Inheritance, inheritance in its technical word, is something that somebody else has labored for, you enter into. You cannot work for an inheritance. All you're working is to train you. God, because if you don't have a diligent work ethic, you can't maintain the inheritance. That's why God is training many of you. But real inheritance comes. How shall I call it? Gado. Inheritance is somebody has worked for it and then you enter into it by reason of their favor or your blood lineage. No, even blood lineage. Some blood lineage, some people don't trust their descendants. So they give other people. The Bible says even a servant will be considered more than a son in the house if he's more faithful than the son. I declare to this house, come to work Christian center, you have entered your inheritance. You have entered your inheritance. You have entered your inheritance. Wells you have not dug, houses you have not built, businesses, businesses that you have not had time to build. Oh, I hear it. God, God said, I'm the one behind the change of the currency. Ah, that's the spirit of prophecy at work right now. God said, think nothing about it. I'm moving their hand and they will swallow up themselves. You know what the Lord told us across the service? He just reminded me now. He said, it is time for my body to be wealthy and exalted. See, Christians, before this year end up, some of you are going to enter wealth. See, God is confusing the people who think they have the government and the economy. They're putting up policies they think to benefit themselves, but he's swallowing them up. That means that he's going to put them in a corner. And God is going to position you. And you're going to get ridiculous. Somebody can buy something at one billion and you, and you, and you buy it at 100,000. And even that 100,000, you don't have it. You say, can I give you 1,000 naira per month? They'll say, please, just take it. Just give me the 1,000. Now me, they tell you, by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Ghost, you're coming into wealth. You're coming into inheritances by the Holy Ghost. This is not to show off. I say, you see, what is going to happen between now and next year? God is changing things in the country to favor the body of Christ. And we're going to have to run to catch the harvest. It's all about the harvest. It's all about the harvest. You see, in the next few years, we have to run fast and furious in this country. Because we have the answer. God is orchestrating things behind the scene. My God, I, I heard that, Lord. He said that I'm the, I'm the hand. I, 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 I saw it in the spirit. He said, I am the hand behind the change of the currency. Do you know they're making decisions that they're confusing themselves? Do you know they're stabbing themselves? They don't know. But I tell you the truth. It's a setup for your get up. There is no wisdom or understanding or knowledge against the Lord. Hear that? Understand that? There's no wisdom. There's no understanding. There's no knowledge against the Lord. Who is it that says and it comes to pass when the Lord has not said it? Mark Torah Basakaya. There's no wisdom or understanding against the Lord. I counsel you, come on the Lord's side. Time has already gone. I can't enter it again this, this morning, but we will this month as God helps us. It's called the fear of the Lord. This is your gateway to the glory. The fear of the Lord. It is not, 
It's not being afraid of God that if you make a mistake, God will kill you. Listen, nobody can buy the blessing of God. Nobody can claim that it's because they dotted every I across every T, did everything right, that God is blessing. And that will be a lie from the pit of hell. No. But there's a positioning that God requires. Because this glory is a weight. It's a weight. How can somebody that was homeless today, next week he owns an estate? How can it be? How can it be? How can a, can a nation be born at once? Can a nation be born at once? God said, Zion travailed as she came. Her child was a man child. The child was born with gimu. In the natural. The, the child was born with a beard. In the natural it can be done. But in the supernatural it can be done. Listen, nations will be born at once. Many of you, your trials were your training. Your tears have been the down payment for your inheritance. God is about to shift some of you today, my brother, my sister. God is about to move some of you, my brother, my sister. The fear of the Lord, reverence for God, is what will help you maintain that inheritance. The Lord told me in this second service, he's moving men into territories. New territories. New zones. See, if you can sense I know what's in the, and know what's happening, God has things are moving in the realm of the spirit. Catch up with God's program, oh. God's program is the fear of the Lord. This is it. What is the fear of the Lord? Is a godly reverence. Is respect for the things of God. Listen, the fear of the Lord does not mean that when you come to church, you should not smile. But even as you are laughing, let your heart be set on Him. You can't say you respect God and the pastor is preaching and you're, you're chatting. Not that, not that, don't even say you're even posting the chat or the message. That's not the time to post it. You're distracted. But some of you, I mean, you can't, you see, the fear of the Lord is what converts your experience, makes you get a rich experience from God. The fear of the Lord opens your ears to hear God. Opens your eyes to see what ordinary mortals don't see. Opens your, open your ear to hear what ordinary mortals don't hear. The fear of the Lord will, will, will instruct you and say, don't enter that car. It won't end well. But can I go a step further? With the fear of the Lord, even when you make the mistake, it can still deliver you in the lion's den. See, this thing is so heavy in my heart. There has to be a revival of the fear of the Lord in the church. Because when God looks at a nation, he doesn't see a nation. He sees his church. And what is happening in Nigeria now is that God is fed up. And God is moving behind the scenes. Nobody, all of us are, at best are speculators. Forget the players, oh. Forget the players on the scene. We are all speculators. It's God that knows what he's doing. But you're, the way you position yourself to get the best, because however it falls, head or heads or tails, you win. For you as a Christian, heads or tails. Whether your political party wins or not, you still win. If you're positioned rightly, your position is the fear of the Lord. Have respect, I beg you, for the things of God. The first place it starts is by having respect for God's word. That's where it starts. He said, I have exalted my word above my name. Psalm 130 verse 2. So the fear of the Lord begins when you say, God, this is what your word said. I may not understand everything, but I, I know you are good. I marshal myself under obedience of your word. That's when separation starts in your life. Separation from, that's how you start rising in life. You start seeing things happening in your life that even you can't explain. Talk less of people looking at you. John 17, 17. Sanctify them by thy truth. Jesus, our Lord, praying. Thy word is truth. Sanctify means separate. Listen, God will separate you from the wickedness in this system. We pray for Nigeria for Nigeria's sake. We don't pray for Nigeria necessarily for ourselves because if it's us, us the church, by covenant, we are separated. But covenant people are not selfish people. We can't be, we can't, you, can't, you can't be rising in darkness and you don't want other people to come into the light. Are you here, somebody? Something is happening here. My God. My God. Something is happening here. <laughs> COVs are changing, changing hand in this service. Do you hear what I said? Certificate of occupancy are changing hands in this service in your favor. But you see, when opportunities come, it will require you being bold. Some of you, they will say, make an offer. Something that's one billion. Listen to your heart. Oh. You've got to say 100,000. Say 100,000. That's already ridiculous, right? But now, how do you want to pay? 
Can you take 500 every month? That's how God, that's how God pays his people. Oh. Don't laugh. Don't, that's how God pays his people. Oh. There are teenagers in this service, right? Lift up your hands. Now, you're going to have to talk with your parents about this, okay? But some of you that want to school abroad, I want to pray for you. Some of you that want to school abroad, I want to pray for you. There's an anointing on me right now. This has nothing to do with your parents' funds. Do I have an ambitious teenager? No, come to the front. That's what I mean. I want to pray for you right now. See, don't just come forward because I'm saying it to you. This, has, this should have been a burning desire in your heart. My God. Now, Lord, concerning their education, give them the very best. 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 Take them to the nations of your choosing for them. Purify their desires. Move them into your plan. Your plan. Your plan. Thank you, Lord Jesus. See, of those are changing hand in this service today. See, you see, when God's glory begins to move, it moves in the material world. This earth belongs to God. Oh. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Are you here, somebody? Oh, my goodness. You know what I heard in the spirit? Concerning your nation. You know what I heard? The Holy Ghost is shouting in my spirit. They have overplayed their hand. They have overplayed their hand. Now they're walking along slippery places. They think they have it tight. Oh, aha. Little do they know. It has slipped out of their hands. The tighter they hold it, the more it slips out. For I put lubricant in their hands. And the tighter they hold it, the more it slips out of their hand. Hey, Thank you, Holy Ghost. They have overplayed their hands. He said, I have lubricated their hand. The more they hold it. Can you hold anything tight with lubricant on your hand? He said, they, the more they seek to hold it, the more it escapes. They have overplayed their hand. And now God is moving on behalf of his people. But let me tell you something reverence and the fear of the Lord. It's not uh, being afraid that God has a hammer that he will, he will knock you dead at every move. Mistake you make, no. No, the fear of the Lord is that you have respect for God and his ways. We're going to talk about this fear of the Lord. Though. Because the body of Christ has become an anyhow body. God respects order. People think now because we have the Holy Ghost, we can just do anything. People starting ministries, they have no business starting. People starting churches, they have no business starting disorderliness in the body of Christ. You can't be blessed doing things anyhow. God is not an anyhow God. A lot of this kata kata that people do is not God. Oh. God is the God of orderliness and decency. Are you a teenager? Are you, are you, are you jumping? Okay, okay, I know Ben, you're protesting now. Protestant, well done. I thought you were protesting because now I know you're a protestant. Okay, so you're jumping in for whatever. Okay, I understand. You're right, you're right. The lay on fans, anybody can enter it. But how are we going to do this thing now? I expected just a few people here now. Oh boy, me and you, our hair is the same. Boy. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, lift up your hands. Lord, move them into the places you've assigned for them. Purify their desires. Let help come to them from heaven. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, man. Move them. Move them. Move them. Move them. Have I prayed for you? Have I? Have I prayed for you? Just come. Just come. Just come. The nations of the earth will respond to you. Let God take you to the nations of your choice. And of his choice, most importantly. Most importantly. Because the place he has for you is the best place for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. Don't worry, we'll soon take communion now. Glory to God. Glory to God. This anointing responds to reverence. Reverence. Lord have mercy. Our time is spent today, but we'll still talk about this reverence business. Because as cheated so many in the body of Christ, disorderly, rebellious to authority, Kai, you can't go far that way. You can't go far that way. Oh. God loves you, but God will not promote a rebel. God loves you, but God can't put glory on a rebel. This I'm not even talking to teenagers. I'm talking to the house. This house. That's why very few people get into the fullness of God's plan. Very few. Because too many are full of their own ways. They want to do things their way. Their own way. God bless you. Oh, be close. Let your Lift up those hands to heaven. Let's worship God a bit. I want to invite the spirit of the fear of the Lord into this house. Are you ready for this? It's your gateway to glory. I'm so with you. Your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. Hey, listen to me. If you don't remember anything I said, God does not promote rebels. God does not promote people that are on authority by themselves. They can't submit to spiritual authority. They can't submit to any kind of authority. God cannot trust rebels. He will not hate you. You're not going to hell. But listen, you will just be at one level and wonder why you'll not be able to rise. Because an inheritance is something that somebody prepares for somebody else. You cannot be talking about inheritance if you were part of laboring for it. So God trains us in faith, trains us in character, so he can put an inheritance in our hand. An inheritance is a thousand and thousand and thousand times more than what you could ever do for yourself. That is why Canaan was given to Israel as an inheritance. Why they had to participate in the fight. They actually just showed up for the fight, but God fought the battle. He wanted to train them to be responsible because what they were going to get is nothing compared to their input. And the discipline of training, the discipline of working, the discipline of prudence was the discipline to maintain the inheritance. God said, what I have for you is an inheritance. Some of you have two cars, some few houses, and you think that, and, and, and you, you're, you're puffed up like a peacock. God said, look at this man, I want to give you nations. But you're failing with the few houses and cars I give you. Inheritances are passing this morning, oh inheritances glory to God I said glory to God I see you running brother I see you running sister what I want now as we sing this song one or two times and then we'll take communion I want us to invite the spirit of the fear of the Lord it's a spirit I said 11 verse 3 calls it the spirit of the fear of the Lord it can be granted to you are you a somebody and it's your passage to greatness it will start instructing you are you a somebody to start grooming you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It will start training you. It will kill lust. Hallelujah. It will kill greed. It will kill lying and cheating. It will kill envy and jealousy. It will produce what I call godly, what the Bible calls godly contentment. You're believing God for bigger things, but you're just happy where you are. You look at your brother and sister blessed with a blessing that you desire, yet you're happy, not jealous. It's the fear of the Lord. It's a spirit. It's not something you work. It's you receive an impartation. One of the things the Lord told us in communion today we're going to get is an impartation of the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Are you here somebody? And then it will help you marshal your life under the authority of God's word. When you're under God's authority, the authority of his word, when you live obedient to God's word by the help of God's spirit, you live a safe life. You see, when you're under the mighty hand of God, that hand promotes you because it knows that no matter how high it takes you, you remain under. You get that? You get that? When God knows that no matter how high he, how he lifts you, you stay under. 
there is no end to your lifting. And today, ceilings are shattered in your life. Today, barriers are broken in your life. Today, limitations are removed in your life. Today, you are singled out for preferential treatment. Oh, invite the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Don't be a rebel. Any little thing, you're reacting, you're sparking, and you just, you just do your way. You think that's the grace of God? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. That word, and in due season, he will lift you. And as long as you stay under his hand, he will say, this boy, this girl, this is my son, this is my daughter, they, are, they will be under my hand. Oh, no matter how high I take them, they will remain under my authority. He will keep taking you higher and higher and higher and higher. But when he sees that there's a point at which he leaves you, that you, you will leave his authority, he says, I better leave him there. Because when all are said and done, it's better for him to be there and still be in a place and zone of safety. Are you here this morning? Reverence and the glory. But mark my word, property is changing hands. Choice property. Hear what the Holy Ghost said. The policies I'm making will end up pushing them in a corner and I'll position my faithful ones. You know, you talk about amazing, almost unbelievable deals. Deals? Get ready. I said, get ready. You stumble into them by the anointing of God's Spirit. Are you here, somebody? And your consecration to God will preserve your wealth and affluence. Because this anointing will multiply goods up. When God knows that the multiplication of your goods will advance his kingdom, you will see goods everywhere. Listen, God has no problem with his children being wealthy. He is wealth personified in ways that you cannot even quantify. God has no problem with his children having goods and, and lands and properties. And they, his, his issue is, will you stay under my authority? Will you allow me to marshal these things for my good? Will you trust my, my character enough to know I don't use and dump people? I'm seeing it all. I'm seeing it all. Some of you have been upgraded today to business class travel. Some of you have been upgraded today to first class travel. Do you know when wealth doesn't become a waste? Then some people you will never reach unless you, you fly first class with them. Some people will not think you're worth talking to. Maybe the conversation that will join you is you're both looking for a reliable mechanic for your private jet. Gulfstream 650 is my preference. Lift up those hands to heaven. I see promotions all over this house. Please go and study it. We'll still talk on it, but the service has to end at some point. The fear of the Lord is your passage into raw, manifested goodness. When the Bible says, in that same Psalm 31, verse 21, Blessed be the Lord my God who has shown me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. That means when this, when this anointing called glory begins to manifest, no city becomes hard. Hey! No city is hard for you in the name of Jesus. No territory is hard for you in the name of Jesus. The fear of the Lord is your treasure. I embrace it all. It's my wealth, my reverence for God and his ways and his things. That's my treasure. I embrace it. That's my secret. That's my, that's my, what do you call this? Uh, is it, it's not Okma. What do they call it? Okma, whatever they call it. That's my, that's my secret. I, I, I hold the fear of the Lord. You, you can, you can curse me. You can malign me. You can betray me. You can stab me. Uh, I, I pray myself into, into the love of God. I will not respond. I will not respond. I'm not going to let the devil move me out of my secret. So long as that thing is on me. I'm slippery in the devil's hands. I keep going higher and higher. Like me or no like me. I'm just climbing higher. We have respect for God's ways. That anointing smears you. God said, this boy is under my hand. Keep promoting. Keep lifting. 
Now nah, I can trust him with it. A billion dollars, nothing. Dunka. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting my name there by faith. Put your name there. I can trust him. I can trust him. Nah, no I can trust him. Nah, he's, he's under my authority. Uh, he'll do with it what I, what I tell him to do with it. Um, lift the lid. Take him to the next place. Shift it. It's not skill and sense that brings this. It's the anointing. Inheritance. Something you don't work for. I've said enough. Thank you, Lord. May we have the communion, please? We're inviting this spirit of reverence or this fear of the Lord. Let it come. Let's, let's not be anyhow Christians. Just do it anyhow. You think it's okay? You just talk about your HOT anyhow. Talk about your pastor anyhow. Talk about you know, God anyhow. Listen, God, you may not die. We're not in the Old Testament. But God will just say, this is how far I can trust them. Leave them there. They're babies. So give them meal for babies. Give them lactogen. Let them stay in lactogen nine realm. SMA. Keep them there. They can't handle nothing. No. No. No, don't. Be somebody that's marshaled under God's authority. Are you here, somebody? Let God's word mean something to you. When, when, when God's word concerning each, any issue is brought to you, just say, sir, yes, sir. Oh, God said, wow. Michael, did you see that? My God. Mm. I think we can, I think we can give this one the economy of Indonesia. I think they'll do well there. They just are seeing things happening. It's not by faith, so. You see, when you do this as unto God, not I serve you. Let me tell you the truth. Man can only promote you thus far, as far as his hand can go. No matter how much he loves you, he can't take you further than his hand can go. And even that hand will get tired one day. But God. That's why when you do things in the house of God or anywhere, do it between you and God. Oh. Because ultimately it's God that promotes. And when God promotes, no man can demote you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, I thank you. My God. My God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for your table. Thank you for inviting us into this banquet. Thank you for this demonstration of your love. There's so many needs in the house tonight, but Lord, there is none that cannot be answered by your broken body and your shed blood. So as we bless this table today, let it become your broken body and your shed blood. As your people partake, let miracles take place. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Let disease die from the root. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let satanic configurations be dismantled in the name of Jesus. Let satanic insurrections, uprisings against people's lives, destinies, finances be dismantled here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let destructive habits die in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let a taste for holiness come alive and the strength to live right come to your people. Let there be impartations of the fear of the Lord. Grant grace to make right what was wrong. Set us along short paths. Strengthen the hands that are weak. The knees that lack strength, strengthen. Make straight the crooked path. My brothers and sisters, God is visiting your house. God is visiting your life. You will be glad. You see, what we trade with in the kingdom of God is not what the merchants of this earth trade with. We are merchants of the fear of the Lord. We are merchants of reverence. Out of reverence comes godly faith. Faith. Out of reverence comes love. Out of reverence comes your inheritance. Some of you from this service have entered the land of your inheritance. <laughs> For the Lord did not give them the land by the strength of their hand. Their might, nor their sword. They showed up for the fight, or they just showed up for the fight. But the Lord gave them the land. That's how it will be with you from today. You will just obey these instructions. You will just be going your way, just like the servant of Isaac said. I, going by the way, the Lord led me. You wake up day by day, going about your daily things. And you will just enter what I call divine interruptions. God will open divine doors for you. You just enter. You just, you just enter 
enter spiritual through spiritual doors going about your normal life but you see you have adjusted something in your heart and the spirit of the field the lord that you your, your reverence for god's things and ways and word has increased your submission and compliance has increased are you here somebody and then god's trust level begins to go up my god one thing for god to love you another thing completely forgot to trust you they're not the same thing he can love you yet not trust you an inheritance is a trust matter that's why sometimes they call it trust fund. <laughs> I guess they got that from God. Thank you, Lord. Be blessed as you partake today. Be blessed as you partake today. Be blessed as you partake today. Receive impartations of the fear of the Lord. Receive impartations of reverence in the name of Jesus. Receive the opening of your eyes. The opening of your ears. The anointing of your heart to understand. Hallelujah. And from today, may the Lord lead you into the pathways of life. Where your inheritance is. Praise the name of the Lord. You will no longer be a man or woman of noise. Always noise. Shouting, arguing, fighting. But in quietness. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9.17, The words of a wise man are heard in quiet. More than the shouting of fools. So let men be shouting and shouting and fighting for themselves. But in your quietness, the Lord will say, This is the way the Lord walk in it. And you just, listen, you will, you will pile up good. And your testimonies are multiplying. You see, because the glory of God is miracles, signs, wonders, mighty acts, and testimonies multiplying. The Lord said, I'm multiplying my miracles in November. And I'm multiplying testimonies in the house of my people. And the house of my people shall be known as a house of testimonies. Shouts of testimony. Let's share the communion out. Let's share the communion out. Thank you. As our custom is when you receive the broken body and the shed blood of the Lord, when you receive it, just holding your hand, whatever, whatever has come across to you in this service, you open your mouth and speak it over your life. You open your mouth and speak it over your life. Receive the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Receive a, a meek spirit, a quiet spirit. Receive the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Receive a, rev, a godly reverence today. The capacity to appreciate that. Just receive it by faith. You see how to start working in your life. Just receive it by faith. The fear of the Lord.
you, Lord, for your broken body and your shed blood. Your word says in Isaiah 53, verse 5, the chastisement of our peace was laid upon you. The punishment that was necessary, required, and needful for us to operate in this great goodness was laid upon you. Thank you, Lord. There is healing for the sick. There is deliverance for the oppressed. There is strength for the weary. There is clarity for the confused. There is abundance to, pro to replace lack. There are increased manifestations of favor. And I hear today, as you partake of the Lord's broken body and shed blood, divine doors are open to you. Divine doors that no man can shut. These things are administered by reverence. Respect for the things of God. Respect for God's order, God's authority, God's word. How he has set up and structured his kingdom. Oh, always remember, never forget that when the Lord knows that no matter how high he lifts you, you will stay under his authority. You have sentenced yourself to ceaseless promotion, scaling new heights, leaping over walls and running through troops. You come to a place that the word impossible and hopeless by experience and manifestation and demonstration will be deleted from your vocabulary. You become a living wonder, a dispenser of God's good. And the good news is that your home and habitation will become a refuge for men. They will come to know this Lord that you know. That's the sweetest part of it all. I declare in the name of Jesus, the Lord shall be better to you this last quarter than he was in the, the first three. Receive impartations of the grace of God and the fear of the Lord. Let it be the culture that regulates your life. And as that glory increases upon you, watch and see how the goodness of God breaks out on every side. You have entered your zone of inheritance. So, ah, my brother, my sister. Ah, ah, that which has been reserved for you has finally arrived. That which has been kept for you has finally come. You take delivery with the spirit of reverence. Thank you, Lord. Let us eat and drink. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. It has finally arrived. May I have taken my own. Are you too righteous to take an inheritance? The Bible said, don't be over-righteous. Say, that which I've been waiting for has finally arrived. Lift up your hands in gratitude. Say, that which I've been waiting for has finally arrived. Say, I know how to take it. I know what to do. And I'm doing it. Say, I've received the impartation. Say, I'm in full expectation. Say, I step into my inheritance. I take it. Thank you, Lord. I declare over you God's preservations. The blood hides you from evil. The blood hides you from evil. The blood of Christ hides you and shields you from evil. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the, high, the blood of Christ is the hand of God that thwarts every satanic plot against you or your family. You will finish 2022 strong, though. No devil will cut short your life. As God's goodness piles and multiplies upon you, you'll be strengthened to enjoy it for a long time. You'll be a distributor and dispenser of the same. And through your rising, many will come to know the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you that through your rising, many, many will come to know the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray for you 
that your rising will not be a snare to you or a snare to anyone around you but will bring joy to many will bring the knowledge of the gospel to many will bring deliverance and from oppression for many your rising will be a blessing to the world it will not be a snare thank you lord can you put your hands together and appreciate the lord this morning can you truly celebrate jesus if you believe something has happened to you this morning glory congratulate your neighbor this morning say to them by prophecy by the word of the lord that which you have been waiting for has finally arrived let's give the lord a shout of praise